Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate fluorescence spectra using ORCA. We're going to pick benzene as an example because it is a small molecule with a well-reported absorption and fluorescence spectrum. So this is the molecule and this is one of the output files from the initial geometry optimizations. What we need is essentially three files for performing this calculation and we have to run these jobs sequentially. So the first one is a optimization plus frequency calculation of the ground state of the molecule. Here I have taken the coordinates of benzene from drawing this in ChemCraft and I have pasted them in this input file. And then I'm doing a optimization with PV0 and def 2 tzbp and then I'm going to calculate frequencies. And we are going to need the Hessian file that is going to be produced by Orca. On a different calculation, I'm going to run an excited state optimization and frequency. So I'm using the optimized geometry from before, and I'm doing the same thing, but I'm now using TDDFT to pick a number of routes for the calculation. These are a number of excited states, and I'm choosing the first excited states. That would be a root one to do the geometry optimization on. So this will do a TDDFT. It will find the first excited state, and then it's going to optimize the geometry for this excited state. So this will produce another uh, Hessian file. The Hessian is the file that contains the matrix of all the second derivatives of the energy with respect to all the combinations of molecular displacements. Basically, it is the matrix that allows you to calculate the frequencies for the different vibrations. The third file, uh, I called it benzene-esd, uh, and basically it's a single point calculation. But the ESD module requires that I provide a ground state Hessian, which is called GS Hessian, and an excited state Hessian because I'm doing the full calculation. So the names of these Hessian files are the names of the output files produced by the previous two calculations. So I had to do those calculations beforehand. The reason I picked this option is explained in the manual. I'm following the manual, but I'm using my own uh, settings. So I'm using the optimized ground state geometry. For the calculation. This is explained in the manual that we have to do it like this. And this is calculating automatically the fluorescence spectrum. So this is equivalent to also writing EST fluor. And I'm going to do a fourth calculation, which is basically the same, but I'm requesting the absorption. So because I also want to show the absorption spectrum. So here, for example, we can see the output file in ChemCraft for the ground state optimization. And we see here that we don't have any imaginary frequencies. This is a, a minimum, a geometry minimum. If I now open the excited state output file that gives me the vibrational modes of the excited state, it has two quite large imaginary frequencies. These are probably modes connecting the ground and excited state geometries. But because this is basically a very simple molecule, the ground and excited state geometries are very, very similar. Hard to distinguish them by sight. I can compare them, for example. So if I come here to the calculation, I can pick this is the ground state geometry and I can maybe paste that into ChemCraft and hopefully it will work. Here it is hard to see, but if I go to display mix and I can copy from 13 onwards, if I plot both sets of structures with a different color, we can see here that they are very, very similar. In a larger molecule, there may be slightly more obvious differences. Okay, so again, in the EST file for requesting the fluorescence spectrum, I require both Hessians, and then this will not do a geometry optimization. I'm, I'm using the optimized ground state geometry, and this will calculate the fluorescence spectra. For example, here we can see the different files. In this folder, there are more than one calculation, but 
These are basically the different files and uh, these are the input Hessians that I had to copy manually into this folder in order for the calculation to proceed without error. So I can go here. So here, if I choose the benzene esd.out file and I look at the lines, I can see here that it made manual displacements uh, for numerical calculations of the different modes. That takes a long time. This is a small molecule, but if you want to calculate a larger uh, chromophore is going to take many hours and then it tells you the different settings for calculating the spectrum so in here it's using a line width of 50 uh, wave numbers and a certain number of points and it explains the difference between the adiabatic energy difference and the zero zero energy difference and it calculates the rate constants of fluorescence that would be 5.36 second to the minus one, which I believe to be a large number. So this took 11 minutes, but believe me, if you increase the size of the molecule, it will very fast scale. So here I'm going to show you the absorption and the emission spectra. I calculated both spectra with the files that I already showed you. These produce dot spectrum files that I opened with um, data visualization program and I plotted. They are, I normalized them myself and I plot them in wavelength units, which is not really recommended, but I want to use this to compare with the experiment. So the red is the absorption spectrum and the black is the emission spectrum for benzene. This looks quite good qualitatively, but if we compare with the experimental spectra, which were taken from PhotochemCAD, that's a very useful database, which is free for retrieving spectroscopic information for many, many molecules. So we see here that qualitatively, our spectra look quite similar to the experiment. Of course, we have more uh, transitions, but if I try to plot both spectra the experimental ones and the theoretical ones on the same scale so that required me to stretch one of the spectra you can see here that the calculated spectra are quite red shifted i wanted to also show you some other calculations like anthracene but in this case the discrepancy is even bigger so the calculated spectrum is much more red shifted than the experimental spectrum so I still don't fully understand why that is happening. I'm going to test a few things. So hopefully I will be able to explain why in a future video. So again, to look at what the options are. First, a ground state optimization plus frequency, then an excited state optimization plus frequency, choosing the first route. Sometimes it can be the second route, depending on the specifics of the problem, using TDDFT. And then both Hessian files, which are produced automatically by ORCA have to be copied into the same folder where the ESD calculation is performed. And these have to be read using these commands. So the correct names have to be given. And then you can also do the same calculation, but you choose absorption spectra and you will also be able to simulate the absorption spectrum, which is not the same as the spectrum that you can generate from a standard TDDFT calculation, because in here you have all the vibrational modes into account. So this is more realistic, but also much more costly. So I hope this has been useful. In future videos, hopefully I will be able to show fluorescence and absorption spectra on much more sophisticated molecules. But I think this is probably good for people who want to start with this type of calculations. So thank you very much.